For the purpose of this example and some of our examples in this presentation, we're gonna we're gonna go a sanitary building drain as this lowest most sort of the waste pipe, so we can take a look at how to size the sanitary building drain in this installation as well. Okay, so we've named all the parts. We've got trap arms for the lavatories up here, trap arm for the flush tank water closet. We have a shower, we'll go with minimum inch and a half and bathtub inch and a half as well. So two trap arms there, just named a few of them here. And then this whole horizontal sort of the waste pipe here draining back to this vertical branch piece is all just branch. As soon as uh, two fixtures came together, we started with this branch. So the circuit vent by definition has to serve the most upstream trap arm on the circuit. So in order to be compliant with those requirements, the circuit vent connection is actually going to be here and we're draining into the circuit vent under the requirements that we looked at earlier. And if these labs are inch and a quarter, one fixed unit each, and they're symmetrically connected to the circuit vent, then we're going to comply to those requirements. So we've got two fixed units draining in there. We're going to size it as a minimum uh, wet vent size of two inch, the code requirements. So to be compliant with article 2545, fixtures draining into vent pipes, we haven't exceeded 1.5 fixed units for either trap and they are symmetrically connected to the circuit vent. Okay, so we're gonna put in other loads here from table 2493, the flush tank water closet is four fixed units. The shower is 1.5 fixed units, as well as the bathtub. Okay, so we're gonna size uh, the rest of this system. We know that article 2545 says that this section, the drain where we're draining into the circuit vent must conform to the requirements for wet vents. So one of the requirements for wet vents serving water closets is that that would be a minimum two inch. Then downstream of the trap arm connection for the water closet, we have six fixed units on this branch section, minimum three inch because of the water closet upstream, even though the branch table would say for six fixed units we could be two inch. Then we pick up another 1.5 fixed units from the shower. Now we're at 7.5 fixed units, but even though the branch table would say something less, we still need to be three inch for the upstream piping. And then we're up to nine fixed units for in total for the branch, still three inch, no reduction in size. Okay, now if we size the sanitary building drain at one and 50, so the slope is necessary in order to create uh, one of these vertical columns for us to look at. Once you know the slope of the building drain and it should be consistent in its slope, that's the vertical column we'll size the building drain from. So now we just look for a load of nine fixed units or greater on the sanitary building drain table vertically under one and 50. Uh, we would stop at 27 fixed units, I suppose, and look at three inch as our minimum size. So three inch sanitary building drain at that point, we haven't made any uh, non-compliant reduction from upstream piping. So three inch would be fine for a sanitary building drain at this point. Now let's look at sizing the venting for the rest of the system. Okay, so we said earlier we had nine fixed units in total draining at, at, at this point of the circuit. This is the lowest or most downstream point of the circuit vented branch. We had nine fixed units draining there. We've named these uh, according to uh, definition, circuit vent is the name for our circuit here, of the most upstream trap arm is where it actually originates from. Relief vents installed, uh, didn't have a solar waste pipe to take advantage of for the relief vents, so we've got a dedicated relief vent installed. Those are both minor vents, so they've come together to create uh, the branch vent here. So let's look at sizing the, the circuit vent. Circuit vents are sized from table 2583, based on length and load. The lower end of a circuit vent for sizing purposes is its connection to the circuit vented branch, the most upstream trap arm on the branch. 
So we're going to include the length actually right from this point here. So from that point, we measure the upper end of a circuit vent to either a major vent or outside air. Article 2583 says that for the purpose of sizing the developed length and its upper end shall either be a vent stack, stack vent, vent header or outside air. So we're going to go 1.2, 2.2, 3.2, 4.2, 5.2, 6.2, 7.2, 8.2, 9.2, 10.2, 11.2, 12.2, 13.2, 14.2, 15.2, 16.2, 17.2, 18.2, 19.2, 20.2, 21.2, 22.2, 23.2, 24.2, 25.2, 26.2, 27.2, 28.2, 29.2, 30.2, So we have a total length for the circuit vent, 8.2 meters, serving 9 fixed units. Because the load on a circuit vent is everything that drains to the circuit. Okay, so we take that information to table 2583. The first thing we look up is the total load served. We've exceeded 8, but we haven't exceeded 20, so we'll look now horizontally. And according to table 2583, if the length of vent I'm sizing does not exceed 7.5 meters, or the length of vent for the purpose of sizing does not exceed 7.5 meters, I could use inch and a quarter. We've exceeded that. We're at, we're at 8.2 meters for sizing purposes. So for up to 15 meters, we can use inch and a half. So inch and a half is the minimum size from table 2583 for the circuit vent. As a dry vent, we also need to double check table 2571 as minimum size for the largest trap served on the circuit. Largest trap considered would be the three inch water closet, flush tank water closet. So for three inch traps, minimum size of venting is inch and a half. So we're going to be fine with the inch and a half for circuit vent. Now let's size the relief vent. Article 2573 says that the minimum permitted size of a relief vent can be up to one size smaller than the circuit vent. So initially inch and a quarter as one size smaller than the circuit vent may be the relief vent size but the relief vent also needs to conform to table 2571 for largest trap served. So for a three inch water closet again we need minimum inch and a half piping so the relief vent as it's considered to be serving the circuit would need to be minimum inch and a half and again anytime water closets are involved minimum size of dry vents will be inch and a half anyways as per table 2571 and anything that's acting as a wet vent or needs to be sized as a wet vent when serving water closets would need to be minimum 2 inch. Now let's size the branch vent. As per article 2583, the lower end of a branch vent is its most distant drainage connection. So as I go back down into the system and, and look at the vents that created the branch vent, Every time I get to a T like this one, I want to take the longest path back to a drainage pipe. So for the purpose of sizing the branch vent, the lower end will be its connection to the symmetrical T for the labs. Its upper end will be a major vent, like a vent stack, stack vent, or header, or in this case, the outside air. So as soon as we get back to the most distant drainage connection which was our lavatories that's the lower end of our branch vent and upper end is always major vent or outside air so in this case we have a seven meter length for the purpose of sizing our branch vent again it's not the length of the of the branch vent that's installed because if you look at this diagram it looks like 3.5 meters of branch vent is installed and in, and in fact what is named branch vent is only 3.5 meters long but for sizing purposes we have to accommodate the longest path of any artery in the venting system that makes up the branch vent so seven meters is the length for sizing the branch vent the load on the branch vent is everything that gets its air through the branch vent which in this case is our nine fixed units okay so now we're going to look at table 2583 to size the branch vent we look up a load of no more than 20 fixed units because we've exceeded 8. 
our nine fixed units. So 20 is the category for us. We'll look horizontally until we find a length that exceeds our length of branch vent. And again, we'll get to the 15 meters, look up to inch and a half for the branch vent. We'll just make sure that that satisfies table 2571, which it will. We haven't made a non-compliant reduction in size from any vent that's connected to our branch vent. If we had a two inch circuit vent or two inch sump vent or something, we need to be at least that size for our branch vent. But in this case, we have an inch and a half circuit vent, an inch and a half relief vent, both served by an inch and a half branch vent, and that's fine. Okay, here's a second example, a, a circuit with four water closets. So again, we would exceed what typical wet venting would allow, for example. If these were two wet vented uh, washrooms, we'd have to have separate branches being served here. But one, one branch can serve all these water closets as long as we have everything else uh, compliant with the requirements for circuit venting. And we're going to start by naming all the different parts of the system here. So the most upstream portion here, we, we're going to have a circuit vent. And according to definition, the circuit vent attaches to the most upstream trap arm. So technically the circuit vent will start here. The requirements of 2545 will allow us to drain up to two fixtures symmetrically connected to our circuit vent. So we're going to pick up a couple labs here, inch and a quarter labs. As long as we meet, again, those requirements that are outlined in 2545. So we've got two trap arms for the lav, draining into a branch. We're going to have to size this branch as a wet vent, as per 2545. Again, it's, it's not wet venting the fixtures below per se, but it's sized as a wet vent according to 2545. Okay, so then we get down to the horizontal branch here. We're just picking up trap arms from the flush tank water closets. Those are four fixed units each. These are all labs. So these labs are one fixed unit each. The downstream labs drain vertically into this branch as well as the upstream labs as well. So at the connection of our most downstream circuit vented trap arms here, symmetrically connected water closets, we have a total of 20 fixed units. We're going to use this as our relief vent. Okay, and then we're going to size all our drainage piping here. The lav trap arms could be inch and a quarter. The branch wet vent, as it is draining into our circuit vent here, would be minimum two inch. So this section here would be minimum two inch. Trap arm for the water closet, three inch. This is the branch that picks up the two laves and first water closet, most upstream water closet. So that's three inch draining six fixed units and the rest of this branch is just size from the branch table 2416B. Downstream of the second water closet connection we have ten fixed units and although the branch table says two and a half inch we would need to be at least three inch to accommodate upstream piping and we're still consistent with serving water closet requirements until we pick up the third and fourth water closets and although the branch table for 20 fixed units says that we can be 3 inch, the water closet requirement serving water closets article 2492 would say that downstream of the third water closet, which now we're at 4, we'd need to be 4 inch. So 4 inch downstream of this double Y connection here. So that would be a 4 by 3 double Y picking up 
three inch trap arms for the other water closets as well. And our sanitary building drain is again installed at one and 50. So one and 50 is the vertical column we look at here. For 20 fixed units, it says we can have three inch up to 27, but we're already four inch upstream. So we'll need to stay four inch for consistency there. Now we're going to look at sizing the venting. So we had 20 fixed units in total, 20 fixed units at this point on our circuit. We're going to use that load to size our circuit vent. So we've got our circuit vent at the most upstream part of the circuit right here. We've got our relief vent that we're going to use right here because that's our vent installed after the most downstream circuit vented fixtures. And then we have this, this other vertical branch here uh, draining two lavatories and the vent continues vertically from that branch serving symmetrically to connected fixtures only. We don't call this an additional circuit vent because we don't have a requirement for an additional circuit vent. This is just two separately vented fixtures draining into our circuit so it's a dual and continuous vent. Dual and continuous vents, like any dual vent or individual vent, is sized directly from table 2571 based on trap serve. So this dual and continuous vent just serves the two inch and a quarter labs directly. And for inch and a quarter traps, it's minimum inch and a quarter piping. So this dual and continuous vent could be inch and a quarter before we size the relief vent, we'll compare that to our circuit vent. So circuit vent is sized from 2583. The length on our circuit vent is lower end at the branch it serves or most upstream trap arm on the branch. Its upper end will be measured until we go to outside air or a major vent. A branch vent won't prohibit us from measuring rate to outside air. If we hit a stack vent or connected to a vent stack or vent header, then we would stop at that point, but we're gonna measure all the way to outside air. So for the length of our circuit vent, we have 7.5 meters, serving 20 fixed units. And according to table 2583, for no more than 20 fixed units, and a length of not more than 7.5 meters, we could use inch and a quarter as the minimum size of our circuit vent. But of course, circuit vents need to conform to 2571, just like any other dry vent for minimum sizes. And as the circuit vent serves three inch water closets, three inch traps, of course need inch and a half vents minimum. So inch and a half, again, very common for venting. We've got inch and a quarter for our dual and continuous vent. But we're gonna size our relief vent. A relief vent is permitted to be up to one size smaller than the circuit vent, but it must conform to table 2571 as well. And as the relief vent serves the water closets on the branch, we're going to use inch and a half for the relief vent minimum size. Okay, now we're going to size this section of branch vent, serving all the vents for this system. Again, as it's a branch vent, it'll be sized from table 2583 based on length and load lower end of a branch vent is its most distant drainage connection so we're going to look at the one longest artery and we'll be coming back to this double sanitary T here we don't measure back down to the origin of the circuit vent that was only in the definition of circuit vent upper end of a branch vent is major vent or outside air so we're going to head straight to outside air here and we've got a seven meter length to be used for our branch vent sizing. The load on the branch vent is all the connected load of all the vents that get their air through the branch vent, so that's 20 fixed units. So again, for not more than 20 fixed units, not exceeding 7.5 meters, table 2583 says inch and a quarter, but the branch vent serves the circuit as well for three inch traps. We also could not have a reduction in size from the inch and a half piping that we're already connecting to the branch vent. So regardless of 2583 allowing inch and a quarter on the table, we'll have to go with inch and a half as now that we're in the venting system, 
we can't have any reduction. And as per 2571, we're serving three inch traps. So a couple of reasons, we're gonna stay with inch and a half there for all that connected piping and the inch to quarter dual vent will be uh, installed there as well.